Okay, so excellent. So, so, um, so, um, thank you everybody for for coming to join us for the first CM seminar for this term. So, I'm um, so so we're we're very um, privileged to have Professor Shidai um, uh, from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology um, uh, to to kick us off um, this term for the CM um, seminars. Um, so. Professor Shidai doesn't actually need very much of an introduction. He's he's this big pioneer in topological materials. He, he does a lot of very um very you know kick-ass kind of calculations in electronic structure, but he's also a person that's very, very interested in physical insight. And he's been able to, you know, use um electronic structure theory um to, to give us a, a very, very kind of, you know, um, big peek into, you know, how electrons move in quantum materials. And so, um, you know, his, his, his work spans from topological materials that like, you know, Kevin 3 Asing 2 a very famous work that he did, um, but, but, um, but into, to all sorts of other things right now. And, 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 um, and uh, today he's going to be telling us a little bit about these Moray heterostructures. Um, and um, and will be teaching us a fair amount about you know how to understand these flat bands. All right. So without any further ado, you know, let's welcome Professor Shidai. Okay. Uh, thank you, Justin, for a very nice introduction. So I'm uh, uh, very happy to be in uh, NTU. Also, it's virtually. Uh, yeah. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to. Uh, discuss with you how to understand the uh, flat bands in twist by the graphing system. So we're going to uh, show you that uh, these flat bands can be viewed as a pseudo lambda level. So that's why it can have some intrinsic uh, topological nature of these uh, flat bands. So uh, this work is uh, mainly done by uh, my student Shi Hao and uh, uh, my uh, a collaborators, Jun Wei Liu, my colleague here in uh, uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and uh, my former postdoc, uh, Jian Pen Liu. Now he is a, a professor in Shanghai Tech University. So uh, the, the talk given uh, today is based on these three uh, publications. So here is the outline of this uh, seminar. So first of all, I will introduce uh, that there are in condensed matter, there are like two origin of uh, magnetism, uh, the spin moment and the, the orbital moment. And in twisted by the graphene, the uh, ferromagnetic state we uh, encountered there is mainly the orbital uh, ferromagnetic state. So uh, to understand, the orbital ferromagnetic state in twisted value graphene, uh, we first need to understand its structure. The, there are two typical like areas in the uh, twisted graphene system. Uh, it's the AA stacking regime and the AB or BA stacking regime. And uh, these two regimes actually plays a very different role in the electronic structure of uh, TBG. So because of the in um, real space, the system can be separated into AA and AB. Uh, the, to the electronic structure, there are actually two different components in the electronic structure. Uh, one is a very localized component and the other one is a very itinerant component. And I will show you that this very localized component can be actually understood by a uh, pseudo lambda level uh, wave function. And uh, those very, and it's located at AA stacking regime. And it's this very itinerant component is the orthogonalized plane wave. So these orthogonalized plane waves are located mainly at the AB and the BA stacking regime. So based on this kind of uh, new understanding of the uh, band structure of TBG, um, we can have a, now have a very uh, different angle to understand the strong correlation physics inside uh, TBG. So because we have both uh, localized orbital and uh, very itinerant plane waves, so systems will behave very much like heavy, heavy fermion systems. Um, okay, so this is the structure of uh, twisted bilayer graphene, and uh, uh, the basic structure can be obtained by 
uh, once you put one sheet of graphene on top of the other one, so then you rotate a very small angle. So after uh, rotating a, a, a small angle, these the atomic lattice of the layer one and the layer B uh, have a slightly mismatch. So this small mismatch actually generates a um, pattern. It's called the Mori pattern. So this Mori pattern uh, is a way to generate uh, like in-plane superstructure in a 2D material. So yeah, but uh, it turns out this twisting is a very efficient way to generate an in-plane superstructure, but not the only way. So yeah, we can think about some uh, other method to generate the in-plane uh, superstructure. To um, generate an in-plane superstructure to a, a direct system, uh, you have a great chance to like generate a flat bands. So uh, let's come back to uh, the Mori system. So the Mori system is probably the easiest way. You twist it, uh, the, a small angle and uh, you put one layer on top of the other. So after uh, like uh, generating the, uh, these mismatch, so in the uh, space, there are areas where uh, because uh, for each graphing sheets, there are A, B, sub lattice, right? So right at the rotating angle. So once you twist, you need a, a rotate axis, right? So uh, right, right at uh, the rotate axis, uh, the A sub lattice of sheet one is exactly on top of the A sub lattice of sheet, sheet B. And the B sub lattice of sheet one is on top of the B sub lattice of sheet two. So this A on top of A, B on top of B is called AA stacking. But then once you move away from the rotating axis, uh, this, uh, the deviation between uh, the A, B uh, sub lattice on layer one and the layer two become larger and larger. So uh, uh, then it, once you go to uh, this A, B stacking regime, so the A is located, A sub lattice of sheet one is located at uh, the top of the uh, the honeycomb center of the layer two. So this uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, uh, A is on top of uh, uh, A, the A sub lattice of layer one is on top of the B sub lattice of layer B, but uh, the B sub lattice of the layer one will on top of the uh, honeycomb, honeycomb center of layer two. So this is called AB stacking uh, the area. So then uh, th this entire space will be uh, like periodically separated into AA, AB and the BA stacking regime. So they, these form uh, uh, like a honeycomb superstructure uh, formed by like AA, AB and the BA. So this is the basic uh, spatial structure of the twisted bilayer graphene. So this is some uh, um, like uh, zoom in structure uh, picture of the AA. You can see on A above A and B is on top of B. And on AB, so that's one uh, pair of uh, sub lattices, they are on top of each other, but the, the other pair is actually facing the honeycomb center of the of the other layer. So this is three uh, typical area. So then I think it's uh, like 15 years ago, uh, Alan McDonald's group, so theoretically, they first uh, calculate the uh, sub bands of this graphing system, a twist graphing system generated by the uh, twisting. So they find a very interesting phenomena. It's called the uh, uh, magic angle phenomena. So once you twist a small angle, that, that would be a, a superstructure. Then because of the superstructure, it will uh, the uh, band structure will get moderated, right? So that's band folding effect. So after uh, this band folding, 
uh, the uh, that would be like summer bands uh, near the uh, energy zero. So Alan McDonald's growth actually first found out that uh, once you tune the twisting angle to a, a very interesting uh, like magic angle, the velocity because uh, near the um, the K point of the folded brand zone, it's called Marie brand zone, and that you still got a, a, a direct point, but with modified velocity because of the uh, superstructure. So this modification of the velocity actually uh, is strongly relies on the twisting angle. So at some some series of uh, like special angles, they call magic angle, the velocity of the sub bands uh, at the K point will vanish exactly. So the, uh, the Fermi velocity becomes exactly zero. So the band is completely flat at the K point. Of course, if you move away from the Marie K point, if you move to the Marie gamma point, you will get a small but finite, finite uh, energy dispersion, but the, at uh, exactly at the Marie K point, the band is a complete flat at the magic angle. Uh, yeah, so then uh, like four years ago, there's a groundbreaking uh, discovery made by the MIT group. So they found that uh, they first measured the, the at the, the all very close to the magic angle. So uh, first they see that uh, uh, once they tune the carrier density by, uh, at, by tuning the gate voltage, they can tune the carrier density uh, of the system. They can dope the twisted value graphing system um, by some electrons or holes. And they see that if they dope uh, like, uh, integer electrons per uh, Marie unit cell, uh, they are going to get an uh, insulated state. But uh, for example, this uh, they call the mod phase is exactly the uh, they dope like two electrons per uh, or two holes per Marie unit cell. But then slightly away from this integer doping, if you make it uh, fractional doping. Uh, you're going to see a superconducting dome on both sides. So this is very much like uh, the situation in cuprates. So once you dope the uh, uh, for for the undoped system, and uh, you have like one electron per unit cell, and you get a, a, a multi insulator. Here is very similar. Uh, if you like uh, have two electron or two holes per unit cell, so that's the integer number of uh, electron or holes per unit cell, you got uh, like a mod phase. And uh, then if you move away from this integer feeling, and uh, you break down this uh, mod phase and get some superconducting dome on both sides. So because the similarity of the uh, phase diagram between the TBG and the, the high TC cooperates. So uh, that discovery actually uh, generated lots of uh, research attention uh, during this uh, four years. So since then, so lots of uh, like new discoveries and uh, keep like popping out in, uh, in this TBG system. So uh, then on the next year, I think in the beginning of 2019, uh, even like a more striking phenomenon has been found, which is the quantum enormous hole. So before uh, the superconducting phase is already very interesting, but now, uh, but still uh, uh, it's um, like uh, not completely crazy because in graphene, we know that the strong uh, like, uh, electron formal coupling, right? So once you uh, generate some flat band, the density of state, you have the flat band. Uh, uh, so excuse me, uh, could you hear me clearly? I, I yeah, saw yeah. Some, uh, some signal, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I can hear you, but you know, there, the, the, 
they're the one or two places where you you cut off okay. like two seconds or three, three okay seconds. yeah yeah so i i saw some warning signals but it's okay yeah. okay <laughs> yeah yeah so then uh, uh but still there is spin orbital uh there's spin uh electron phonon coupling in graphene and once you make the density of state very high so uh, you will get a chance to go to superconducting phase right but this anomalous Hall effect is, or quantized anomalous Hall effect is very, very like unexpected in the uh, TBG system. Because in graphene, the spin orbital coupling is almost exactly zero. So uh, I think uh, there are some serious ca uh, DFT calculations uh, made by uh, two of my former colleagues in IOP. So they actually predict the actual spin orbital coupling strength in graphene is 10 to the order of minus three, like MeV. So it's uh, it's exactly uh, very, very tiny. So you can safely uh, uh, just uh, throw it away. So you can safely say that uh, for a single sheet graphene system, there's no spin orbital coupling. But then uh, the anomalous Hall effect, so we know before is all, yeah, in most of them actually uh, are due to the spin orbital coupling. Because the anomalous Hall effect uh, measured is the orbital part of the um, ferromagnetism. So uh, the ferro, so this orbital ferromagnetism uh, is, um, like usually is generated by spin orbit company. So in, in most of the traditional like quantum anomalous Hall effect system, first of all, you, you need spin to order. So then due to the spin orbit coupling, you will actually generate the spin order will give you some large orbital order. So this orbital magnetism then bring us the anomalous Hall effect. But here, because of there's no complete no spin orbit coupling. So the, um, quantum anomalous Hall effect in, in these systems has to like purely contribute to the, to, uh, the orbital effect, not the spin effect. So this is like a, a very striking a discovery in like a twisted bilayer gra graphene system. So then we need to understand uh, its uh, physical origin of this um, orbital ferromagnetism in just graphene. So if you compare uh, this new um, orbital ferromagnetism we found in graphene, uh, in, in twisted graphene, uh, then uh, compared to the traditional magnetism system, for example, the, the traditional magnet uh, has two like contributions, the spin moment and the, the orbital moment. For the spin moment, it's due to some uh, uh, some motion inside the electron uh, itself. So uh, the spin moment should due to some uh, some unknown uh, like spatial structure of an electron. So which is uh, within a very very tiny length scale, right? It's ten to the order of uh, fifteen meter for the radius of an electron. So then the orbital uh, the magnetism of an atom or ion, magnetic ion, is due to some uh, electron uh, wave functions. It's, it's atomic electron wave functions. So then uh, these, the size of these atomic uh, orbital uh, like wave functions is about uh, the size of an atom. So the radius, a typical radius of size of atom is uh, like uh, 10 to the 11th meter. So it's 0.1 angstrom. And then, but uh, uh, the orbital moment we see in uh, uh, like TBG system has a much larger radius. So if you look at the size of a uh, 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 Marie supercell, it's about several tenths of nanometer. So it's uh, 10 to the order of eight uh, meter. So uh, like several orders larger than atomic uh, moment. So it's uh, in terms of the spatial size, the Marie 
uh, orbital moment. It has a huge spatial size. So it's, it can be viewed as some circulating current existing that in, uh, in this ferromagnetic state in, uh, in, at a Maurice scale, so which is several tens of uh, nanometer. So, so then in, in the view of that, we should view uh, entire like Mori unicell as a uh, um, like super atom. It's a huge atom, a huge two dimensional atom with the size of like uh, Mori like, uh, scale, which is uh, like tens of nanometer. So then we apply this kind of uh, physical picture to uh, look at uh, to, to reorganize uh, the theoretical model, firstly, uh, first proposed by uh, Alan Magnana's group in uh, like 15 years ago. So they actually uh, expand the uh, Dirac uh, equation of uh, graphene on both layers. So this um, part is the, the first layer and the, the lower part is for the, for the second layer, the uh, Dirac equation for the uh, second layer. So then they turn on the Mori potential generated by the interaction, the, uh, or the hybridization between the wave functions on the like, both layers. So this Mori potential is weak and uh, has a uh, like very long period. So, the basic model is just you put like two uh, two Dirac points from two layers and the couple of them with the Mori potential. So these uh, small Q1, Q2, Q3 are uh, the, yeah, let me go back to the previous uh, slides. So this, these are the uh, small, like small, uh, momentum difference between the K point in layer one and the, the K point in layer two, because you twist it. So the K points, uh, you also twist in, in momentum space. So there's a um, momentum difference between the K points in like two different layers. So that's uh, this small angle Q, which actually is the period of uh, the Mori potential. So they just put on this Mori potential and uh, uh, then solve the, this non-interacting Hamiltonian, then you will get this flat bands. So then uh, uh, another very important point I, I would like to emphasize is that uh, these two flat bands is actually topological. So this uh, is a very interesting. So if you calculate the Wilson loop kind of pattern, uh, you clearly see that uh, these two, uh, because at each valley, there are two uh, flat bands. So the two valleys are two flat bands from one single valley. Actually, they uh, form some topological uh, band structure. So that's one band uh, has a number plus one, the other one has a uh, number minus one. And uh, uh, these, two bands cannot hybridize uh, if you don't break uh, the C2Z times T, T is time reversal. So this uh, uh, like Z2 symmetry is actually guaranteed by uh, this uh, C2T uh, symmetry. If you don't break C2T, uh, you have this uh, like winding of the, the Wilson loop and uh, you can separate these two uh, flat band into two ways each of them uh, carry like finite number. It's plus one and minus one. So this is a very interesting uh, phenomena. So then uh, in 2019, uh, we developed some uh, theory, theoretical understanding of how to understand this, uh, the topological nature of these uh, flat bands. So we start from like uh, expand uh, the theoretical model proposed by Alan Magnana uh, in real space. So this is the, the theoretical model. And then we look at this Hamiltonian in real space at 
uh, right at the AA stacking center. So the AA stacking center is the origin of the our coordinate system. So we just expand the Hamiltonian uh, uh, right at uh, the origin. So if you if we expand the Hamiltonian right at the origin, then to, then this Mori potential become a linear potential because we expand it to the first order in the, in coordinates x and y. If we do this first order expanding, so we are going to get um, uh, some kind of uh, vector potential to coupled to the drag point. So this vector potential is we call it a pseudo vector potential because it's not generated by external magnetic field. It's actually generated by the, the string field near the AA stack center after twisting. So this, we call it a pseudo magnetic field and the, the pseudo vector potential. So why we call it pseudo magnetic field? Because it's not a, a real magnetic field and the, the system obviously keep the time reversal symmetry. So the Hamiltonian will be separated into two subspace. So that's one subspace, uh, the electrons can feel a magnetic field pointing up, but at the opposite uh, subspace, uh, the electrons actually feel a magnetic field pointing down. So the, overall speaking, uh, this point, these two magnetic field cancels it, cancels each other, and the, the system actually will restore the, the time reversal symmetry. There's no actual breaking of the time reversal symmetry. So these two subspace is actually formed by uh, just a linear combination of the electron degrees on layer one and layer two. So it's a one, uh, kind of uh, basis is the um, the wave functions at the layer one plus the i times the wave function at the layer two. So the second uh, basis, a uh, second subspace is the wave function at the layer one minus i uh, times the wave function at the uh, uh, second layer. So we like. Uh, reorganize the layer index in such a way one plus i uh, two, then uh, uh, we got this uh, new basis. So in the new basis, the string field near the A stacking center, all the Mori potential, if we expand it into the leading order to the, to the first order or the, to the linear order, so then uh, we can get this, uh, the Mori potential will become uh, a pseudo magnetic field. Uh, described by a pseudo vector potential A. She, did, did you mind asking a slightly technical question? Um, yeah. How is this um, related to chiral limit? Yes, this uh, uh, is, is a very good question. Yeah. Uh, uh, so in the chiral limit, they actually uh, neglect the all the coupling between the 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 uh, same sublattice, right? Uh, so if you neglect the hopping terms in the Mori potential from A to A, B to B, only keeps the hopping term from A to B and the B to A. So then uh, you, you will keep this uh, chiral symmetry. So in, uh, and this chiral symmetry actually exists uh, actually for uh, all the uh, K points. It's not only uh, some K points near some, some special area. So then you get a, a complete flat band. But here, uh, uh, we look at the problem in real space. We expand the Hamiltonian at uh, the, the like uh, AA stacking center. So then uh, we didn't neglect any like um, couplings, uh, non chiral couplings. So if we neglect this uh, U0 here, uh, we'll go to the Cairo limit uh, for Hamiltonian near the A stacking center. But here we can keep this U0. I see. And I see. Uh, I, we can still solve it. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. So this picture is like, uh, so I, I would emphasize again, so this linear expansion Hamiltonian only actually works for the regime in real space near the AA stacking center. So in the AA stacking center, uh, the system is, looks like, 
Yeah. Is that I'm a question? Sure. Yeah. yeah, I have one question. So what is the yeah. physical reason uh, reason uh, behind this, the expansion only around AA? Right. Think, the physical yeah, reason what? is that uh, uh, we want to treat this Marie unicell as a big uh, two-dimensional atom, right? So for a two-dimensional atom, we need a, a nuclear, right? So for an ordinary atom, we have a nuclear. So the uh, wave functions will be very localized uh, near the nuclear, right? So then become very uh, itinerant if the wave function is far away from the nuclear, right? So here, uh, first we found that the, uh, the most localized part of the wave function is always near the A static center. So this is a, a, a finding after we solve the, the BM model and we plot uh, the wave function of the flat bands. We see that most of the, the flat band uh, wave functions are located very close to the A stacking center. So it looks like A stacking center is an attraction center like a nuclear in an ordinary atom. So it attracts lots of components of the wave function. So then it, of course, it will extend to AB stacking center. So they, then the AB stacking center is, is more or less like uh, the interstitial areas in the, in the solid where it's far away from any of the nucleus, but A stacking center is behave like attraction center. So then we decide to, what if we expand our Hamiltonian near the A stacking center to see uh, like very close to the A stack center, what the uh, Schrodinger equation will look like in real space. So then we find it, it do looks like a, a lambda level problem. So the eigen solution will be like lambda levels in symmetric gauge. So the lambda levels in symmetric gauge is very localized. So uh, um, if we like, uh, choose the zero standard level. And in the zero standard level, we choose this M uh, index to be zero. It's also, then uh, the, the lambda levels will be really localized near the A stacking center. So, and the, these lambda levels have a very large overlap uh, be, between uh, two to the uh, Fred band, actual Fred band wave function. So the physical picture would be like uh, at the A stacking center, uh, there are like very strong uh, pseudo magnetic field, which generates very localized the zero standard level. And these zero standard level are attracted, uh, are like uh, trapped near the A stack center. And they can hop, the electron can hop from uh, these Zero, zero standard levels from one unicell to another unicell to form uh, the complete flat bands. So that's the physical picture of the flat bands. So we know that it's originated from uh, some pseudo lambda levels. So um, like uh, one unicell, there'll be one uh, left-handed lambda level and uh, one right-handed lambda level. So the right-handed lambda level actually, if you allow it to hop from one uh, unicell to another, it will form the, the chain band with chain number plus one. And the, the opposite lambda levels will actually form uh, the chain band with opposite chain number. So that's the, the, uh, the physical picture of the, the, this uh, plane waves, if we understand it in using the language of, uh, uh, pseudo lambda levels. So, so at the risk of um, uh, of uh, delaying your, your your talk a little bit, can I ask you one more interesting question? At that point, yeah. I am I, I am a bit slow. So when, whenever I think of, of lambda levels, I think um, you can always do uh, you know um, to number one, to number two, to number three, to number yeah. four. Yeah. You can yeah. go all the way um, arbitrarily. Yeah. Um, is this the same case as well for the pseudo lambda level? Yes, uh, uh, we can understand this higher uh, bands with the pseudo lambda levels as well. But uh, because we expand our Hamiltonian near the A stacking center, so if we go to high level lambda level, uh, high lambda levels, all 
uh, the, the, even the zero standard level, if we go to high angular momentum, the wave functions will like move away from the AE stacking center. So then our approximation is no longer valid. I see. So I see. our application is a very good approxi uh, approximation only for the zero standard level mm -hmm. with angular momentum zero, m equal to zero. It, so both like two index n and m, because uh, we know that in symmetric uh, gauge and other levels, there's two index, right? Both index has to be zero. Then the uh, wave function is very localized to the A stacking center, so which makes our approximation perfect. But if you move away, uh, if you go to some high nano levels, so then the, the wave function will move move outside. So this this it's our, our approximation is is not good. Thanks very much. That, that, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. So then uh, uh, with this nano level understanding. So now we can like apply some old tricks of the density functional theory. So in the density functional theory, we know we have this Marfentin approach, right? So near the nuclear, we make a Marfentin and uh, solve the shorting equation within the Marfentin uh, use some atomic method. But then uh, outside each Marfentin, uh, because the, in, in this area, we call it uh, interstitial area. So in the interstitial area, the electrons are, are far away from any of the nucleus. So the potential here is more smooth. So the uh, solution of the Schrodinger equation is uh, very close to a plane wave. So inside uh, the Marfentins, the solution of the Schrodinger equation in all, in ordinary atoms, it will be atomic-like, right? So it's an atomic-like wave function versus uh, a, a nearly plane wave wave function. So here we can apply the same trick to make some, some Marfentins. So we know that within the Marfentin, which is in the area, which is close to the AA center, um, we have like atomic-like wave function, which is our lambda, a zero standard levels. But outside, uh, the, in the interstitial is the AB and the BA stacking regime. Uh, they are still plan waves. But then uh, we need to apply a condition that uh, because uh, in the A stacking regime, this lambda level solution is already a very good approximation of the eigen, uh, the, the actual eigen solution of the uh, Schrodinger equation here. So the in the outside regime, uh, I mean, in the A, B, and the B, A stacking regime, these plane waves should be orthogonal to the uh, atomic-like wave functions near the near the nuclear, right? So it's then in traditional solids. So this is a very old method. It's invented by Professor Herring in 1940s. They he invented this OPW method. So this is a uh, uh, they use like two set of basis function. One is uh, the atomic wave function near the nuclear, and the, the other set is the plane waves outside the in for the outside area. So then the condition is that the, the these plane waves has to be orthogonal to the uh, atomic like wave function to in order to form uh, uh, like a complete basis. Right. So uh, otherwise, the basis will be over complete because uh, the plane waves also uh, have some large components uh, in the area in uh, where it's close to the nuclear. But this, uh, so in order to make it complete, not over complete, so you need to uh, like project out these atomic uh, wave functions out of the plane wave, wave, wave function. So by project out the atomic wave function, you actually generate uh, plane waves called OPW. It's an orthogonal uh, plane wave, orthogonized uh, plane wave. This OPW wave function is then a, a more efficient wave function to describe the actual band structure. So now we actually, here we copy the same idea. Uh, we construct the OPW uh, actually for the uh, twisted bilayer graphene system. But now the atomic wave function is replaced by the pseudo lambda level, pseudo zero standard level we obtained uh, previously. So 
like by construct uh, this uh, OPW. And uh, uh, the first step is to get an accurate, like zero standard level wave function, right? So in uh, this year's work, my student Shi Hao got found out that uh, uh, at near at near the A stacking center, once we expand our Hamiltonian into the leading order, uh, this equation actually can be solved exactly. So he solved this uh, lambda level equation exactly and they got this very nice uh, zero standard levels. So this is the plot of the zero standard levels with like uh, four different components. And uh, you will see that the, the wave function is uh, uh, very much concentrated, concentrated near the AA stacking center, which is the origin of this, uh, our coordinates. So then he uh, constructs the corresponding OPW uh, wave functions and uh, combining the uh, zero standard levels wave function and the OPW, uh, we can form uh, like a complete basis to describe all the uh, subbands in uh, in, a, in in the TBG. But uh, uh, now we have actually reconstructed the theoretical models um, previously proposed by Adam McDonald's group. But, but now we uh, use like two different set of basis function. The um, zero standard level, which is very localized near the A stacking center and the, the uh, OPW plan waves, which is outside this A stacking regime. But uh, one may ask what is uh, the benefit to do so, right? Because uh, previously you can just uh, describe everything by plan waves. So that's the uh, basis uh, used by Ellen McDonough in at the beginning, right? So why we why we should do this? But the uh, the answer is uh, by doing this, we actually can like have a very good starting point to study the correlation effect in the uh, TBG system. Because these two orbitals, uh, localized orbital and the extended plane waves, uh, the correlation effect is very different in these two type of orbitals. So if you treat everything by mean field, then uh, probably uh, you can uh, work with uh, like work with the original BM model. But if you want to treat the correlation effect more rigorously and uh, then you need to actually uh, like treat the strong correlation effect within the zero sum level using some uh, non mean field method. But you can still treat uh, the correlation effect uh, in in the rest of the orbitals uh, using some some mean field type of approach. So by separating the uh, the localized part from the non localized part, we actually have a very a firm basis to further study the its uh, strongly correlation effect. So, so this is some, some test uh, of our uh, new model. So once we have the uh, like zero sum level and the, the uh, OPW, if we turn off the coupling between the two subsets, so then we get a complete flat uh, like, uh, zero standard levels because the overlap between uh, the zero standard levels on different unicell is very, very small. So it's the, if we switch the coupling or the hopping between uh, the zero standard level and the OPW, the band will be like almost completely flat. But then these OPWs will form uh, some quadratic touching point at uh, the gamma point. So then we turn on the hybridization between the two. So there will be a gap opening at uh, the, uh, the Mori gamma point. So we get the actual like uh, flat band structure of uh, a TBG system. So you will see that uh, at the Mori K point, uh, the almost 100% of the components are from the uh, zero standard level, but uh, at Yes, so on the, on the right uh, plot, 
uh, the rightmost part, part is a component of uh, the uh, TV, uh, the flat band wave functions. At the, if you move from Mori K point to gamma point, you will see at the gamma point, uh, the zero standard level component become almost zero. And uh, at the gamma point, like hun almost 100% of the components are actually from the OPCW. And uh, uh, at K point, it's all, almost 100% uh, of the components uh, from the, the uh, zero standard level. So, so that's why it's a uh, very, very, uh, the uh, frame velocity will exact vanish at the, the K point. And then at the gamma point, because uh, it's 100% of the components is actually from OPW. So you, you will obtain some finite energy dispersion uh, right at the gamma point. So this is the actual uh, uh, band structure of TBG. So then the, uh, near, right at uh, the K point, we can expand our Hamiltonian by like expanding the coupling between the uh, between the zero sum level and the OPW, we can like construct an effective K.P model. So by this K.P model, we can predict the velocities at the uh, at different twisting angle. So we can predict. Uh, so once these velocities goes to zero, so we get some a uh, magic angle, right? So using this model, we can predict all the magic angles. So the first magic angle is uh, from our uh, calculation is from uh, uh, 1.05. So then we can also predict the second and the third uh, magic angles, which is all uh, very close to the previous results. And uh, uh, this, Similar idea can be also uh, be used to construct effective models uh, for the twist multilayer system. So yeah, we'll skip th these parts. So uh, once you have this lambda level uh, picture, you can uh, easily under understand the quantum anomalous hole effects. So. A uh, quantum hole effect is actually uh, generated by lambda levels, right? But here we already have the lambda levels, but the only thing you need to do is just uh, just without symmetry breaking phase. So uh, you have uh, like lambda levels at the uh, turn number plus one, and you have lambda levels with turn number minus one, but uh, uh, without symmetry breaking, you just equal equally occupy the the plus one states and minus one states right so once you turn on the current repulsive interaction so that will be a uh, symmetry breaking phase transition so after phase transition you got like some valley order or spin order so then the the occupation of these states are no longer uh, equal so you, you uh, for example if you put like uh, seven electrons to occupy all the eight states. So now we turn on the physical spin. So totally we have two atomic valley and the, at each atomic valley, there are two uh, flat bands originated from the like, two pseudo lambda levels, right? So then uh, totally we have eight bands to be occupied. So if, if we have seven electrons, so that's the case for the uh, three quarter feeling. So you occupy eight, uh, eight bands with seven electrons. So if uh, for the symmetry breaking phase, you will occupy seven of these bands. So if you occupy seven of these bands completely and you completely unoccupy one of these bands, you will get like non-zero turn number. So this is uh, quite obvious. And we also did some uh, uh, realistic, like uh, Hartree Fock type calculation, which confirms our uh, conjecture that uh, once you have uh, integer, uh, you occupy integer number of electrons in the uh, flat band system, and uh, you, you actually occupy uh, integer number of flat bands and unoccupy the rest of the, the flat bands, 
uh, you are going to get a quantum norms whole effect. I'm sorry, I have one question yeah. here. So, yeah. Uh, in the previous slide, please. So yeah. does it matter uh, for the, no, uh, the mean field calculation. So does it matter which model yeah. do you use, like your model or the old continuum model? Does it matter or is it? Yeah, so I, I will come to this point very soon. Yeah, it's in the next slide. Thank you. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the, the, the pattern of the, uh, if you have uh, like the valley order, if you only occupy one valley or you unequally occupy two different valley. So then the, uh, if there is no like, uh, mass in your direct point. So the mass term is actually provided by the alignment of the TBG system with the substrate, which is the BN uh, substrate. So if, if there's no alignment, uh, so there will be no uh, mass terms in, in your uh, flat bands. So you actually get uh, a, like, uh, you then you will still have C2T symmetry. So the current pattern, we can calculate its current pattern. So the current pattern is very interesting is that you have circulating current uh, in, in a, a, a Mori unicell, but these circulating currents cancel each other exactly. You have like three circulating center, uh, uh, they are circling uh, clockwise, and you have three circling center, they are circling anti-clockwise. So overall, uh, because of the C2T symmetry, the current actually, uh, the overall magnetic field generated by this type of circling pattern uh, will be vanished in an entire, un uh, entire unicell. But once you break down the, uh, C2T symmetry, you will get a, a large circular current circling the uh, center of the, the uh, unicell, which is the AA stacking center. So there's a large circular current uh, generate uh, uh, non vanishing, like net uh, magnetic field. So this is the origin of the orbital uh, ferromagnetism in TBG. Yeah, so then uh, because of the uh, this, uh, we have separate this uh, degree of freedom, uh, localized degree of freedom and itinerant degree of freedom. So now we can have uh, like a Harry Fermion like physics in uh, TBG system. This is first day proposed by uh, my, uh, like Andrew Bernowicz group. Uh, in last year, they they actually use a very different approach, which is the one year function approach, but they come to the very similar conclusion that you can separate the degree of freedom uh, to localized and itinerant uh, components for the band structure of TBG. So based on that, we can consider the quantum problems. So which is quantum effect and uh, the RKKY uh, like, Type of coupling between the uh, the local moments. Uh, so in our language, is the local moments is always live in mainly in the on the uh, zero standard levels, and uh, those OPWs will provide some RKKY coupling between those local moments to form uh, ordered state. So now that comes to your question. So now we can. Uh, calculate this Hartree fork type of calculation. So uh, we found that if the uh, feeling factor is uh, integer, so if you feel like seven electrons to uh, eight band system, or uh, you put like six electrons or five electrons for, for uh, totally eight bands. So for every integer feeling, uh, the mean field approach is a very good approach. So we can like uh, compare the two kind of uh, schemes. The first one is like the the uh, first one is uh, like I said, I only consider the strong correlation effect on the uh, zero sum of levels, right? Because this is the only localized component in my model, right? So then the second approach is like I consider correlation effect everywhere. So uh, I, I can do like full set self-consistent uh, Hartree fork. So the first is uh, we only consider the 
uh, correlation effect on the zero sum level. So we compare the result. Uh, and uh, they are very similar, which is if you only consider the correlation effect on the uh, zero sum level, we already get a very good result compared to the, the full consideration. So uh, which tells us that full, like, uh, so because this is an integer feeling, so that's not, not a um, very strong a dynamical correlation effect. So uh, the, mostly we have the, the static correlation effect, but by testing uh, the, these two different treatment, we can already see that, the, uh, that to capture the main strongly correlated physics in, um, in a TBG system, it's already a very good approximation if we only consider the strongly correlation on the, uh, on the localized component. Here in, in our model is the zero sum levels. And the, the results is uh, very similar with the, the full consideration where you treat the correlation everywhere. But then uh, the next step, because with that, we can actually uh, move our consideration from the integer feeling from non-integer feeling. So we know that for the non-integer feeling, the dynamical uh, correlation effect will dominate. It's no longer an a, a ordered state anymore. So then, uh, so uh, there's ongoing work in, in my group. We are trying to apply uh, the dynamical mean field theory and the, the good will approximation to, to the system for the cases with non-integer feeling. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, I, I, uh, I will stop here and uh, thank you for your attention and uh, I'm ready to take questions. Great. So um, thanks very much for the very interesting talk about this and a very new way of thinking about, you know, twisted by the green band structure. Um, please, um, um, questions from people, especially students. Yeah, I have one question. So first of all, uh, this is a really very nice talk. Thank you very much. Uh, so my question is about the coupling between localized and delocalized orbitals. So in your yeah. model, you can switch on and switch off uh, the coupling. So do you know what that coupling depends on? Yeah, that coupling, uh, I see, uh, this is a good question. Uh, this type of coupling depends, strongly depends on the twisting angle. So we found that uh, uh, for the non-magic angle, so we still have this uh, very flat uh, band if we switch off the coupling between the um, localized and the, the non-localized uh, orbitals, right? But for the, this uh, non-magic angle, once we turn on the coupling, uh, it suddenly become like uh, the, the bands become non-flat. So which is uh, the coupling will actually generate finite uh, velocity, Fermi velocity at the, the Mori K point. So, so this vanishing of uh, the vanishing of Mori K point at uh, the vanishing of Fermi velocity at Mori K point is is some oscillating uh, function as a uh, as a twisting uh, angle changing. So, so uh, yeah. uh, maybe I did not express myself clearly. So I'm not yeah. asking about the effect of the coupling. I'm asking about the reason behind the coupling. Do you do you have like oh, any analytical oh, expression? Uh, there must be a coupling uh, because uh, the, oh, uh, the the zero standard level is not an exact solution of uh, uh, this Schrodinger equation because the zero standard level is only a approximate uh, like solution of the Schrodinger equation. Uh, this approximation is that uh, uh, we expand uh, the exact uh, showing an equation near the uh, AA stacking center, we expanded uh, using the uh, respect to x and y to the to the first order. 
So then the, it's not an exact solution. So that, then the uh, itself cannot be uh, an exact eigen solution, right? So it must mix with other components to form a, a, like actual solution. So these other components is nothing but the OPW. So the coupling must be there. Okay, so one last question. So yeah. now you showed in your expansion that there will be a pseudo gig field. Right. So, right. so what's the so what's the effect of that value of the gig field? If you increase the value, will the coupling increase, decrease? Oh, uh, the value of the gauge field is also a function of uh, twisting angle. So, um, if uh, you increase the value of uh, this uh, field, uh, the pseudo field is the uh, equivalent to like increase the twisting angle. So then uh, the coupling, I think it will, yeah, it's it, it, it's not a monotonic, it's, uh, it will go up and down and then and, and form some oscillating uh, pattern, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, thanks. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, uh, if there are any other questions from other people? Yeah, so I have, Oh yes, please. Yeah. please um. um. So because of this uh, twisting in the graphene, right? What are, is the most major significance in terms of its application of this twisting? Right. Oh, uh, in uh, you mean perturbation? No, no. The effect of per, uh, twisting is not a perturbation. It's actually very strong. It can modify the uh, uh, Fermi velocity of the graphene direct point. Because we know that originally uh, the monolayer graphene, for monolayer graphene, the velocity is very high, right? It can modify this very high, uh, like- Yes, uh, of course. A, yeah. a velocity to zero. So it's a, it's no longer a perturbation. It's a very strong effect. Yeah. I think I think what Raylan was trying to ask, I if yeah. you if you let me try to paraphrase, yeah. um, I think I think he he had said um, applications application oh, application. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think I think he wants the more general view of this, not not just uh -huh. the more specific view. Uh huh. Oh, you mean the application of the? Is that correct? Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, Is that correct? Raylan. Uh, yeah, yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think. The application of these uh, systems can be uh, like, first of all, uh, you can have like uh, orbital ferromagnetism in, in such a, a 2D systems. So then uh, you can generate so many uh, interesting phases, right? So now we have like super connecting phase, quantum anomalous hole phase, and uh, uh, this, um, mod phase and uh, yeah, and uh, several uh, others more. So once you have such a fruitful phase diagram, you can always find out uh, uh, a regime that uh, it can be useful. You can uh, use it to uh, to design some uh, quantum devices or something, right? All right, thank you. Yeah. Wait, super. Yeah, no. Um, so I could could I ask uh, one more question about this whole chiral stuff um, again. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So um, a, as as you very well explained, um, the yeah. chiral limit is when you know you kind of neglect the AA couplings and you just focus right. on AB couplings and stuff. And so that's that's great. But you know, if yeah. you re read that you know paper from Ashvin, right. um, you know they they actually do a mapping. So 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 once they take the chiral limit, they do a mapping right. to a Landau level problem and they right. find zeroth Landau levels as well. And so right. it seems very interesting to me that, you know, um, you come at it at, in completely different ways, right? Right, so, right, right. So, so he looks at it from the chiral limit where AB right. is, is, right. is, is major and AA is switched right. off. You look on the AA sites. Right, and you still find that there's a pseudo Landau level kind of um, right, structure, right. and and in fact, I, in fact, actually, he concentrated on the zeroth Landau level on his side, and you concentrate on the zeroth um, pseudo Landau level. Right, um, and so I I wonder if there's, I, how, how do these two descriptions? Why are they? It's it's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing. It's, it's if same you thing? look at uh, the A staking center, uh, the. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same thing. Yeah, in Ashwin's approach, uh, they don't need to uh, be limited to the A stacking center. 
But then uh, their wave function is no longer uh, exactly a, a, a zero sum level because it it uh, go it will like approaching the wave function of zero sum level only near the A stacking center. But I if see. you move away from the AA, so there will be other components. Um, right, so it's no longer uh, exact uh, zero sum level. I yeah. see. Okay, can, can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure. um, so yeah. at the very, very start, you you said um, that because of the size of yeah. the um, array unit cell, it was no, no longer very good to describe things in terms of magnetic moments. Um, and then you said yeah. it was very good to describe things using current distribution. I, right. I'd like to unpack that statement just a little bit. Do you yeah. mean that the traditional uh, formulas for orbital magnetic moments, for example, right. the, 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 the well known yeah. ones from Chen Yu, are, are, yeah. are these still applicable? Or are they not applicable? Um, I think uh, we need some new thinkings in, in this problem because in, yeah, this is a wonderful question. Actually. <laughs> so actually in, in the traditional uh, magnetic system, so we usually use this uh, multipolar expansion, right? This is because this atom is always far away from the other atoms. So the atoms uh, where the uh, current uh, have the, this current distribution is much smaller with the uh, uh, interdistance between the two different atoms, right? Mm -hmm. So the distance between two different atoms is at least 10 times larger than the current distribution. So current only uh, have some finite distribution near the nuclear. So mm -hmm. in this case, you can like expand this current distribution using a classical like uh, multipolar expansion. So in the orbital moment, in the traditional orbital uh, magnetic moment system, we usually use this um, multipost. Uh, to describe, to replace the, the language of current distribution. Yeah. Right. But here, uh, the size of Mori is, is very huge. It's very large. So the current distribution uh, scale is the same as the, uh, the distance between two different unicells, right? Ah. So then the multipolar expansion is no longer a very efficient way to describe such a problem. So we, it's better to, yeah, we, yeah at, at, at the beginning, uh, about like two years ago, I, I spent uh, uh, like uh, uh, a lot of time to try to calculate its uh, multipolar order. So because of this, this uh, distribution size is exactly equal to the distance. So you need to expand this uh, function to be to very high then uh, you need to worry about some very high uh, order multipolar order. So which is not very efficient. I see. So it, it's actually much better to look at the current distribution itself rather than to expand it using the multipolar language. I see. Can, can I paraphrase that a little bit? So yeah. um, whenever I understand it, um, just, you know, just from my naive point of view, whenever I understand the magnetic moment, right. something, I always think, you know, I should try to calculate some kind of magnetization profile from current density. And that's right. some kind of R cross J, some kind of R cross right, J. Right, 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 right. And you can quantum mechanically find out what the J operator right. is and calculate right. all of those things. Yeah. Um, typically, you, but you need to also understand um, to get to the magnetic moment, you need to right. get um, some kind of inhomogeneity in the current right. density. So this uh, R cross J is only the dipole moment. That's so right. if you uh, want to give uh, like a uh, complete description of, of the, uh, this magnetism, uh, you need to go to not only like R cross J, uh, so you need to go to some higher uh, magneto, uh, uh, higher monopole, uh, uh sorry, higher, uh, multipolar. Multi yeah, sure. Yeah. So then, uh, it's no longer only, uh, R cross J. It, it has like uh, many, many high orders. Yeah. Of course. So, 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 so then what's the correct prescription then? So do you just look at the current density or you just don't, don't, right. don't, don't so don't. you look at the current density and then you calculate the, the field the uh, distribution. The magnetic field. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. Right. Very good. Yeah. All right. So um, 
Any more yeah. questions? Yeah, I still have one question. So I have one technical question. So you showed yeah. us these current distribution maps. So did you mention the details of this calculation in one of your papers? Uh, yes, yes. I think uh, we have several uh, papers on that, and uh, we calculated this current uh, current distribution pattern several times. I think, yeah. It, so, if and, you search my paper, you will see it on uh, on the paper. Yeah, I will see the details of the calculation. How I can reproduce it? Uh, the details of this. Uh, I I think it's a very straightforward. You just apply uh, because after you solving the the bm model right you already got the the wave function you just use the ordinary current operator uh, then you calculate the expectation value of this current operator then you get the the current current distribution for any like a particular state so we have calculated the current distribution for uh like mainly for the value polarized order, but you can also calculate. I, I think Ashwin's group calculated also for this uh, KIVC order. And uh, uh, their conclusion is that in, in VP order, so in value polarized order, the current is a large loop circling uh, the entire brain zone, uh, so the entire MRE uh, unicell. But in the KIVC, it's a, it's a small, Small loop, small loop just involves several, I think, uh, lattice constants. Uh, it's a, it's the atomic lattice constant of graphene. Can you so kindly this KVC and the VP uh, in terms of current pattern is very different. Did you just mention the name of a group? Can you please repeat that name again? It's just Ashwin's group, Ashwin Vishnu. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, so thank you very much. I think okay. I think we run out of time. Um, thank you for entertaining all our questions. Um, yeah, sure, <laughs> my pleasure. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I think I think we're we're, we're at the end. Um, so um, let me just stop the recording. Uh, uh, thank you.